it was one of these signs that really connected the dots for me uh, between science spinning and conceptual art. Because in much the same way numbers are not mathematics, I, I was quick to realize that uh, these signs are not science spinning. All right, it's just one smaller piece of the, uh, of the bigger thing. Yeah, so, uh, and yeah, initially I didn't understand it, but it they all are comes signs together. signs spun. Yeah. <laughs> It's the, the, I, you know, at this point, sentences on conceptual art is a classic. It's canonical. So in some sense, it's just, it can be treated as raw material, mm. right? That can be uh, chopped up to some extent. So I think there are some, some of the statements are, f the, the, there's a, some degree of fragmentation, some of the, some of the, the, the statements, I think. Um, but the, uh, that, um, but thinking of it as not just raw material, but raw material, one, the reduction of it to raw material, because it is canonical, right? It's just, in art terms, it's as well known as Shakespeare yeah. in some sense, right? But the uh, reduction of it to raw material, but then also the reduction of it to advertising, right? So to ask, mm -hmm. is there, uh, you know, at what point do things enter into the public domain, right? At what point can these things be preyed upon and reduced or converted or transformed into advertising slogans, right? Mm -hmm. In which case it makes advertising a kind of um, the imminence, right? It's like, oh, is that where all things go? Is that where all things are headed, right? What are these words for, right? Is all language subject to being instrumentalized for the purposes of selling something, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the, the idea that this can be done with LeWitt I would say it's much more of a, uh, a kind of proposition. And in keeping with LeWitt, right, proposition, it's an idea that you then have to do to, know, to find out, does this work, Yeah. right? And then what would this be an ad for, right? So you're talking about the people who would see this. You know, if I you know, saw this cold on the street and if I saw perception is subjective, that one I wouldn't necessarily remember as belonging to LeWitt. Numbers are not mathematics. Maybe I would remember, uh, there may be three or four in here that I could peg as belonging to LeWitt. Right. But because they would be existing out of context, I would be asking myself, because it's a spinner, what am I being sold? Yeah. Right? And I think that that's a, that's a, uh, uh, that's the rub, like somebody saying, is this real estate? Yeah. You know, and, and thinking, um, uh, is it uh, where, you know, I mean, there's a certain point which you know, I would say the way advertising, how old is advertising? Not very old in some sense. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a fixture of the way we live now. But I have to say, even over the course of my lifetime, advertising has become quite baroque, let's say, or abstract. So even though there are ads, billboards, pictures, and words, but I still don't understand what I'm being sold. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, that's a little bit too witty. You know? yeah. So yeah. again, do we live at a moment and under conditions where any piece of text uh, from anything can be placed at the service of buying, selling, right? Yeah. One, of the, one of the things about sign spinning as a form of advertising that makes it so effective is uh, the concept of unaided recall where you know uh, a person lives in a neighborhood and they drive past uh, the same intersection all the time you know it's like the first turn out of their complex and so on a saturday they'll see the sign spinner out there 
And on a Tuesday, the sign spinner won't be there, but they'll remember and they'll see it and they'll say, okay, maybe today's the day to go get a sandwich. You know, and it's like, it's this impermanent, like it's this sticking in the mind. And I think that's what a lot yeah. of what the modern advertising, like, yeah. you know, they've really focused on being so bizarre mm -hmm. that your brain just, I don't know, I'm just, puts right. it in a box, it's yeah. somewhere, it's like, it, there, it doesn't fit in any category. And some, somehow that's what defines uh, successful advertising now. Right, right, I don't, you're right. It, 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 you know, I got your attention. Yeah. You know, now mm. towards what end? And I keep it. it. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's better that you be left wondering towards what end than if, than if I, in fact, just gave it to you. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, here, here it is. So, but yeah, but there are ones that, uh, you know, her willfulness may only be ego, right? Whose willfulness? <laughs> See, mm -hmm. I, I really like the ones with uh, third person pronouns in these because you can just yeah. walk around. <laughs> and and it, it, because it's an arrow, you, know, you can basically accuse people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. I didn't think about that. I didn't, it points. Wow. Yeah. You're right? <laughs> All right. Um. Okay, today's episode of the Spin Industry Podcast features Hamza Walker, the director of LAX Art, and Justin Charles Michael Brown, the 